Donnybrook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS. Hey, it's opening day number 37 for Donnybrook. Just like the Cardinals, we're winners. So thank you for joining us tonight. Hey, we got a slightly different starting lineup this evening, beginning with Sarah Finsky, Riverfront Times, and her sister Publications, one of our founders, Bill McClellan from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Jacob Kern, Managing Editor of the St. Louis Business Journal, and of course, Joe Holloman, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Well, today is opening day, and it's a big deal in St. Louis. I mean, we turn out in the cold, the rain. A few years ago, it was snowing. Sold out game. Everybody's excited until maybe a week from now, and we'll see how it goes from there. But, Joe, there's always this clamoring that this should be kind of a holiday in the St. Louis area. Like, we won the World Series, but it's just opening day. What are your thoughts on that? I, I'm all for holidays. <laughs> I am all for holidays. So any governmental entity, any business out there that wants to give their employees a holiday, I say go for it. You don't have to. But if you uh, want to, you can go to the game, you can stay at home, watch the game, do whatever you want. But I have yet to find a holiday that I will oppose. Well, Joe, I, I used to write that summer solstice should be a holiday. Okay, let's do it. And, and I thought that was a great idea because we could incorporate Cahokia Mounds with yeah. it. You know, people could go to the mounds at, at dawn. I thought it was a spectacular idea. I think Flag Day yeah, better is better than opening day. You know what? I'm going to take the very popular position here of being against holidays. First of all, I feel like the Cardinals need to actually win before anybody in this town should get a holiday. Second of all, as the parents of a young child, I will say, if these schools start taking off, that's not going to be much of a holiday for a whole bunch of us. So I'm just hoping we can all just stay at our desks and pretend that we're working rather than actually get a day off. The feds make holidays, I think, usually, if it's going to be uniform. And I'm with Sarah, but the team has got to win. And before I came over here, I saw on Twitter, it seemed like everybody who was at the game wanted to show John Mosellock getting booed off of the field during the introduction so and I think people should have a day off to have that opportunity <laughs> where they could go and boo whoever they want and I throw in summer solstice flag day and the feast of St. Louis let's get all those too more holidays in good weather and less in bad weather. It will pro it'll probably help the city grow. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the exactly. Young people like holidays. The, absolutely. I don't know if they like baseball, but yeah, they like oh. holidays. Well, they like holidays. We can yeah, become right. a destination for lazy people. That's, that's great branding. <laughs> right. I and thought that, we already were. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that did remind me of something, because I actually did have this conversation. Because it's going to be such an educational thing, um, schools are going to be in you know during the eclipse the last one seven years ago it was in summertime so there was this there was a debate like well what do we do you know should school be out because everybody's going to be focused on that but i think it's a great opportunity to be in school and use it you know and have the, the, the correct gl glasses and, sure. and all that so that's one where i could kind of see it going uh, either way and just you know for the record i'm taking off on eclipse today so that's my holiday <laughs> don't forget the glasses oh, oh absolutely and in all sincerity yeah be safe because it can be dangerous okay this weekend st louis is ground zero we got the battle hawks we've got the soccer team um and we've got um, cardinals the cardinals god isn't it shameful <laughs> battle hawks soccer what's that other you need team? a holiday uh, <laughs> the cardinals are playing right <laughs> Uh, and quite as it's kept, St. Louis University women are playing in the NIT final. If there was not a concert at uh, Chaffetz Arena, which features uh, Adam Wainwright as the opening act, by the way, there would be another sporting event uh, in St. Louis on Saturday. So estimates say 100,000 people are going to be in the downtown area this weekend. And I mean, people have all just said that it's just going to be, you know, so terrible downtown. It's awful downtown, but yet 100,000 people are coming down and hopefully all will have a good time. Hopefully all will be safe. Jacob, you're happy about all this, aren't you? 
I feel that when I've been somewhere that is vibrant, it's sort of the reverse. These things happen automatically, and the residents who are there, and by the way, there's a lot of them, are upset because there's going to be, you know, a lot of people interrupting their daily lives in front of the coffee shops, lots of people on the sidewalk. St Downtown St. Louis has a long way to go for that. I mean, it needs major more density in terms of residents. That's what makes a neighborhood, not in and out mm -hmm. suburbanites coming to these one-off uh, events. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, the future of downtown is uh, in boosting up residential because office is a big problem. And so they, they really, that is in the works, but they really need to do a better job with that. It's interesting, though. I mean, you're right about you can't rely on the suburbanites coming in before games as, as building a vibrant downtown. But I know some restaurant tours downtown who are just doing gangbusters. And, you know, there's a couple of uh, new, really big restaurants that have opened sort of in the shadow of Bush Stadium. Thought, oh, hey, we'll go down there. It's a night the Cardinals aren't playing. We'll be able to walk right in. They had like a 50-minute wait. I mean, there is more vibrancy downtown than sometimes that we're willing to give it credit for. It just can be kind of hit or miss. And I think it's great if we can have these people coming in for the games help supplement things it gets that feeling where maybe people who aren't as willing to go downtown are going to take that chance and maybe feel a little safer because there's more of and, and, there. and I hope they do Sarah you know I remember when the Pope came and we ran so many stories about how crowded downtown was going to be and predictions that people would be stopping their cars on 40, 64 and walking in. And so business leaders, oh my gosh, they told their employees don't come in. And it turned out nobody was downtown. Yeah. So I hope this weekend is, is much different, that everybody's down there. I think it's great that there's going to be 100,000 people downtown. And, and I think, you know, the, the thing always comes by is, is that it's easy and again, let me pre preface this by saying I'm a city resident. But, you know, just because you live in the county, it's not a crime to come in for a baseball game and then go home. I mean, and, and you know, th so this idea of like, oh, I wish the county people would do this. Well, no, the county people are doing what they do, which is buy tickets, come in, eat at restaurants, go to the game. And if they go straight home, they go straight home. And if I they don't, they don't. Sometimes I live in the city. I go straight home after a game but to it, a quiet residential area. I mean, there's no requirement for me to spend X number of hours anywhere. But what you're so saying kind of illustrates the, the problem with relying on these giant events. I went to the first City SC game. Tons of people. It was a street party before. 25, 30 minutes after the game, you know, the, the Union Station soccer bar and some of the things, there's people inside. The street's dead. Well, I, I mean, so... I, I think your mis the misconception here is is that I'm relying on it as being something amazing other than just by coincidence mm -hmm. three sporting events happen in downtown and downtown will be a cool place to be. Now if we get into well what we need is more people to move downtown okay let's open up all the things the city needs to do to make people want to live downtown. All I'm saying is is that for one weekend There'll be a lot of people in St. Louis. It'll be vibrant. It'll be alive. And that's better than not. And we talk about restaurant owners. You say, I know people who own restaurants. They like people from the county coming in and eating at their restaurant. So I think the county gets a little unfair shake because they decide to live somewhere outside the city. That's their choice. I mean, so, but I'm just glad they're going to be down here. And if some I of those people, know, I don't know that they get an unfair shake. I think where some city dwellers get upset is that you'll constantly see county people commenting, "Oh, it's so dangerous! Like, never go down there." I have some relatives who are like, "Oh, I don't know if we should go to City SC. It seems very dangerous." And I say, "Hey, my kid's daycare is one block from there. We drop the kids off every morning, every afternoon for for six years. Never had a problem. Just give it a try." I think county residents are as critical of the city as city residents are of people in the county. Yeah, I, no, and. So, well, then, so, I'm so saying, you're let's, bashing let's county. Stop that. I'm county not bashing. bashes I'm city. I'm saying I'd like to see them give the city more of a chance. There are some who don't. But I think that's a very. I, I don't think that's a lot of people. And being, you know, a a county person my entire life, and coming down to the ball games, and coming down to football games, and doing all that. I agree with Joe. There's this. There's this like we're not doing our part kind of thing. And I'm like, and no, come on now. That that's not true. And by the way, city dweller, where are you going after the show tonight? Uh, to that great I'm going to the county. Yeah, exactly. To, I'm going to the county. To the great state of Kirkwood. There you go. Right. We got a new mayor, and it's not me, by the way. <laughs> All right. Hey, they've got a lot of new school board members uh, throughout the St. Louis area. 
in the Francis Howe School District, a lot of national news was made out there by some decisions that that school board made. Uh, some right-wing candidates were defeated. Sarah, is this a, you know, kind of signal that things are changing as far as attitudes, or is it just like a one-off as we're talking about the games this weekend. You know, it's hard to read too much into a super low turnout election, which this was, but there was certainly a lot of motivation, I think, by parents and people who are invested in these school districts to say, hey, this has gone a little bit too far. You know, in Francis, in the Francis Howell School District, uh, the previous school board had done a resolution saying that they stand against racism. Well, the school board came in and felt the need to repeal that. It's like, what does that mean? You're uh, you're now against, against being racist? racist people weren't happy about that it felt mean-spirited mm -hmm. and I think that you are seeing a backlash for that there were 13 candidates who were endorsed by uh, the arch-right media talker mm -hmm. uh, Mark Cox all 13 mm -hmm. of them went down to defeat I don't think that's a coincidence it sounds like what you might be asking is if this helps our friend Ray Hartman <laughs> <laughs> well let's put it this way I would be reading those tea leaves in a way that in a positive way if I were running for office now be it statewide be it uh, just in our area around here, I think that I think it means something. You mean if you were a Democrat running for office, you yes, think? yes. But I mean, this is such a low turnout election. You think you can read anything into this as far as a presidential? Year? That's a, that's a good idea with those numbers because the numbers are. I think no, I, I don't. I, I think mm -hmm. first of all, when you're voting on a school board. Mm -hmm these anxieties and these problems from the last several years where your grocery bill is 40 or 50 percent higher that's not really going into that that is going to show up in a presidential election okay so I'm not telling you that it it doesn't affect what's going to be happening but I I don't think we can really know I agree with Jacob I think there's a unique set of circumstances that come into play with school boards that don't come anywhere else it's our children okay mm -hmm. so it, it's kind of got that very direct impact on all the parents and on the other side of that coin if you will not as as drastic but in the maplewood richmond heights school district some people who were painted as more far left candidates incumbents also lost their seats and i think what i see if you take the two together if you want to try to read any tea leaf out of it is is that it seemed to me that parents were saying how about we stop all the virtue signaling maybe and we just get down to teaching our kids and and let's bring it into what the school board is supposed to be doing so i mean i think if there's something there i think we see the difference as jacob pointed out that difference between this is a school board let's educate our kids let's stop all the conflict and all this drama and get back to job one. And I think that's what I see out of this. Uh, I think that happened in Clayton. You know, there had been the brouhaha about the school board having a secret real estate deal with to buy Calera, and they announced it right after filings had closed to, to run for school board, and a write-in candidate Pam Liss Lehrman was the big vote gutter in the Clayton School District, and the incumbent was uh, Jason Wilson lost. Mm. So uh, I, I think that people say, like you say, Joe, let's get back to just the schools and supporting the teachers and the staff and keep the district level. It's so interesting to hear about a write-in candidate winning. That seems almost unfathomable, and yet that also happened in Maplewood. Yeah. For the mayor's race. race. Yeah. And right. I know that's one you've covered, Joe. I mean, right. How do you read that there? I, I think that was a case of, uh, first of all, the, the mayor who won, the, the person who won mayor had been mayor before, lost to the person whom he defeated yesterday. So he was a known quantity, but I think it was a case of there was just a dissatisfaction since the vote turnout was just about the same. Hmm. I, was looking, I was looking at the numbers. I was thinking, was there a big turnout for it? So the person that they, Barry Greenberg, who three years ago was the mayor, was defeated by uh, Nikhil and Knapper. Now then he turned around and outpolled her. The vote amount was just about the same, and I think it came down to the people of Maplewood uh, were dissatisfied with the mayor's performance. Uh, she didn't carry a single precinct. Hmm. So it wasn't, I lo you know, looking for pockets of resistance or whatever. Uh, there was just a general dissatisfaction, it seemed, and people went to the polls and wrote in. But I, I find it unusual because that's such a river to cross, that getting people to write in a name, that you know, you just can't punch that button. 
And so clearly the people in Maplewood and in Clayton had strong feelings about we don't like what you've been doing and they expressed themselves at the polls. And that's a very good sign, though I think no one should forget Sarah's mentioning of how ridiculously low the turnout is in St. Louis County. So I don't know what the result of every election in the St. Louis County seems to be that most people in the county just don't care. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. Another interesting thing about uh, write-ins that I didn't realize was the election board said if if it's clear who you were trying to write in, like in in this case it was Pam Liss Lehrman, but if if you just wrote Pam, the vote counted. Yeah. And I, I was shocked to hear that. That is shocking. Yeah. yeah, you'd be shocked at some of the people who get right and votes for mayor. Well, uh, <laughs> how many did you get last year? I'm told I got 28 four years oh. ago. I, I don't Six know. of those were mine. I, I don't know. know. <laughs> right. I, hey, I squeezed my name on that line a lot of times, let me tell the you. The incumbents yeah. better watch out in Kirkwood. <laughs> oh, man. That was four years ago. It's all. Who, who knows what happened on Tuesday? All right. So, at. Uh, Margaret and Jefferson, prime piece of real estate. Man, it's been clear they were going to build a hotel. It was all good to go, and then suddenly it was going nowhere. And here we are a week later, and now we're going to have a nice boutique hotel bill. You're excited about the new hotel, and well, compromise. I think that's the important thing. Well, the, the compromise was in... in two areas, Elvin, and it really confused me. One, the developer is decided to be union friendly, and I thought that was a good idea, and I think a hotel can easily live with union employees, even though they have to pay a little more, you know, just charge a little more for the room. But the second part of the compromise was that the hotel is going to try to provide housing for students and their families who are unhoused, as the saying goes. And I, I just think to myself that that won't work. I, I mean, a hotel and a homeless shelter coexisting, I, I don't think that the hotel patrons, as, as fine people as they might be, and they uh, it's hard to speak against homeless children, but I don't think that many hotel patrons would like the idea of sharing the hotel with homeless shelter and having homeless people living in the room next to you. I also don't know how you, like, monitor that. I mean, how do you, is someone going to show, like, okay, it's this many families are in at this time? And the other sort of ambiguous compromise deal was that, oh, we're going to pay the employees you know, kind of high. There wasn't even a number. And this was to kind of pacify the the progressive part of the Board of Aldermen who initially voted down these incentives. And so, you know, I just don't understand how that works with their voters. I mean, I don't... Sarah, you look... No, I, yeah, you're, you're ready to go, Sarah. So you know, anytime I hear Ebenezer Scrooge himself show up at the table, it's just it's such an opening. I said you're I mean, right. You were doing a good job of speaking well, against you know, the whole I'm one of those people who, when I watch The Christmas Carol, I'm very disappointed that Ebenezer changes from being a sound yeah, businessman. Right. <laughs> no, no, I, I... Well, well, you go ahead, Sarah. No, I mean, I think I was actually kind of touched when I read this story in your paper, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. It said not that this was something that had been suggested by the progressives on the board of aldermen but this hotel magnate who wants to put this hotel on this corner he had suggested to them okay would this tax break be more palatable if i would agree to house some uh, st louis public schools uh, children who are homeless during particularly cold times of weather he had heard some testimony that apparently touched his heart and he thought if it's freezing outside to give them this very temporary shelter for these families and stepped up and, and volunteered this himself i thought well that's lovely and as much as all of us here uh, at this table might think we know the hotel business and mm -hmm. we've got to protect this hotel from these homeless children r uh, running rampant, if he steps up and says he thinks he can do this, I'm, I'm so blessed well, by that. Well, well so Sarah, how, how do you evict these homeless children once you let them in? Like, it's, it's very cold out, so we're going to invite everybody in, and that's a fine idea. But then the weather warms up a little bit, and these kids and their families still don't have 
housing, so they, are you going to evict I don't, them from the hotel? I will say I don't think families want to live in hotel rooms. That's a really bad situation to be in with kids. You'd have to be pretty desperate to want to be stuck in I like think what that basically says is she doesn't have an answer to no, how you get out of there. Well, <laughs> they, no, because the point comes in, you let them in during cold weather, one would assume people don't look to come to mm -hmm. St. Louis a lot in very cold weather, but then as it gets warmer, do you ask them to leave? Do they get to stay? How many rooms will be there? I mean, I think it's a lot of a lot of ideas that I hear people go, that sounds like a good idea. And I agree. It sounds like a great idea. Now, how will you make it work? I think the that's what I think is on, missing. The statistics on families with young children that are experiencing homelessness, it's a different population than the traditional unhoused population in St. Louis, which many times you're dealing with mental health issues, you're dealing with addiction issues. Sure. For families, it's often more of a temporary problem, and they're finding a family member that they can go shack up with. And again, you do not want to be stuck in a hotel room with little kids running around. You want to find a family member. Sarah, to Sarah I, I would love to see a program that deals with helping families with little kids that need housing I'm just not sure that a boutique hotel is gonna work well I'm but, fair point but I appreciate this hotel magnate for stepping up I, of all I, things I to do. offer now I don't know I guess the once contract signed he has to do it I'm not holding my breath on that actually becoming no, part I don't of think the plan so. I, I hate to be untrusting but, but I'm the, the thing that I just don't understand and maybe you can address this We've heard from Megan Green and this le hard left side, no more of this, no more of these handouts for these people, these corporations. This is good enough? This is what it is? And then it's just, the, re the amount isn't reduced, yeah. it's just... Take it, it. it is interesting the amount of the tax break wasn't reduced, and I think this allows Megan Green to come to her constituents and say, I got some concessions. Are these concessions that? good that? enough? It's so, and, and, and so it's sort of when theory meets reality. <laughs> theory meets yeah. reality. And, and, guess, and then so. all of a sudden, when it was like the theory behind the unhoused Bill of Rights was a grand theory until people could pee and poop on the street. I think and then they said, oh, the reality of that's not so good. I mean, so for I, this one, the reality is that they demolished a building and they have a vacant lot sitting there on a prime. prime intersection. Right. So now it's just going to sit there, you know. Uh, the, the, the point, the point being is, is you can come up with all the grand sounding ideas on what you want to do, but at the end of the day, that progressive mindset is going to run smack dab into reality. And it's not going to be, well, we're going to do this, 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 and this, and then the builder says, see ya. Well, and then, so where do you go? So then there becomes the compromise. Politics, the art of compromise. And I think that people new to the political game are going to eventually learn that or they're going to get voted out just well. isn't well. this a prime example of the kind of compromise you're talking about? That's exactly what happens. And when we see it happen, but the, what we've compromised is on theory. I want to see how this hotel is going to work. And maybe it catches on and every hotel can have this or it's an unmitigated disaster and no hotel ever agrees to this. Point is, is not, none of us know right now what it is going to be. All we know is, sounds like a grand idea. Okay, meanwhile, on the other side of the state, the Kansas City Chiefs are two-time defending Super Bowl champions. The Kansas City Royals, God awful. But anyway. <laughs> no, they the, won in like 15. I yeah, guess. yeah, you're right. It wasn't, I always still think about 85. Cubs won in and 16, wanna, so that's yeah, recent I'm, history. I'm very upset about 1985 to this day. Cleveland? But anyway. Oh, that was long. All right, so the voters on that side of the state told both the Royals who want a new stadium and the Chiefs who want stadium improvements that we're not paying for it. And overwhelmingly turned down uh, a pair of ballot issues. Is this a warning maybe to St. Louis baseball team? Anybody else that wants some, uh, you know, tax money to try to improve whatever it is that they're trying to do? I would like to congratulate the good people of Kansas City for using the upper part of their intellect in voting this tax down. I don't believe in tax breaks for sports teams. I don't believe in tax breaks for corporations. Especially when you want to build a new stadium, build it. You guys make money. I've seen your payrolls. So... Build whatever you want to build. And if you don't want to build there because some other place is willing to mortgage off more of their tax money and you're going to move there, see ya. Right, but now, oh, go ahead. Go Orbs ahead. Jacob. just had a report today mm -hmm. that even in the down 23 season for the Cardinals, the profit mm -hmm. went up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I do think that this result is kind of a, a warning to them because that facility is coming up on, you know, 
what's going to be coming in 15 years or something. Them saying, well, we're not going to move because Ballpark Village is there, the towers are there, but it needs a complete overhaul, billion dollars, something. Knock yourself I, I'm, out, guys. I'm not sure that that's. I, I'm not sure <laughs> it's going to. I'm not sure it's going to fly anymore. Well, okay. I, I mean, I, but you have sports teams. They, you know, they'll say we need a, uh, improvements. We need money for improvements. But then the Dodgers will give seven hundred million dollars to one player. Don't come to me as a taxpayer now and say you need a little more money from me. Well, I'm, take okay. fifty million right. from that guy you just gave seven hundred mil to. Cardinals as an example here. They tried to play that bluff that hey. We're going to move possibly to Dupo and all that. And everybody knew they weren't going to move to the Illinois side. Kansas is a real threat to get that baseball stadium especially. And if they were to move, I think that then the voters would say, like, ah, we, made a, we made a mistake. So, I mean, somebody's going to have to answer to it if the Chiefs won't move. But I believe the Royals would. I don't know if Jackson County voters would say that they made a mistake. Okay, they do just let them go, huh? Yeah. Well, just well, drive right over the line to Kansas. Yeah. To well, the game. When, 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 when we threw out the St. Louis Cardinal football team, people were, felt good about it. You know, yeah. Bidwell wanted a new stadium, and people said no. And Vince Shamel said, you know, to call them crooks and everything. The city kind of felt proud of itself. The whole uh, region did. But then we said, uh, let's we build it. We got to go. We got to go. Hey, we got a couple of voicemails this week. Hit it. The problem is that they will not aggressively collect their delinquent accounts. They employ three law firms that file hundreds of suits every week in St. Louis City and St. Louis County. But they don't let the lawyers collect. MSD has the same status as a tax lien, and where the city and the county will sell properties for delinquent taxes, they will not let, MSD will not let their lawyers do the same thing. I know that this is the law because I wrote it when I was a state representative in 1991. Thank you. We need an oversight board for MSD. I would like to know, or if someone could find out for me, whether or not these increases that the MSD keeps asking for will be paying their $4.7 billion that have been um, waged against them by the government. Thank you. All right. You can write to us at Donnie Brook, care of 9 PBS, 3655 Olive Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108, Donnie Brook at 9PBS.org for a email. And send an X Twitter to hashtag DonnybrookSTL. If you want to call the nine line, give us a ring at 314-512-9094. And check us out on the Donnie Brook podcast, available on major podcast platforms. Thank you, Jacob, for joining us this week. Joe and Sarah, you guys are just uh, in and out every week now. <laughs> Bill, always a pleasure. Go Cardinals. We're in last place. But it's all right. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Donnie Brook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS.